and hurling final day, as usual, brought the crowds to Croke Park, Dublin, from all over Ireland and from other centres too. From morning, a stream of people filed to the gates for the big games. A happy group, keen to see the best in hurling between the Wexford men and the Galway men. For weeks, the talk of the country had been, who would wear the hurling crown? And now on September 4, the answer was to be provided. What a grand spectacle as the world-famous Croke Park housed a crowd of over 72,000 eager followers of our national game. Down through the years, the All-Ireland Minor Final has been a curtain raiser to the feature event. How often it has provided an exhibition of the art at its best. This year, it was a turn of Galway's youngsters to oppose the lads from Tipperary, and of course the hurling was bright and at times even sparkling. Tipperary, playing with traditional dash and zest, soon had the position on hand and try as Galway would, they could not match the craft of such players as Ray Reedy and Jimmy Doyle, names surely destined for further honours in the game of hurling. Galway is building a tradition for top-class goalkeepers, and even in their 5-15 to 2-5 defeat, their shining light was Connemara boy Ken Croke, a wizard between the sticks. Despite the one-sided nature of the final score, interest never flagged as Tipperary treated us to a hurling exhibition. The minor contest over, the spirit of the day was kept fully alive by an exhibition of Irish dancing by Craven Kathanig and the McCaffrey School of Dancing. The boys and girls danced with traditional precision and grace to the delight of the huge gathering. Yervada Gadanik na Fornerum Bark. Soon the teams are on the field. Galway have a hurley swinging youth at the helm. Wexford's Nick O'Donnell and Pudge Kell. And Bobby Racker gets in a little stick work. And so to the colourful parade, Arcane Boys Band, the Finton Lawler Pipers, and Galway led by Jimmy Duggan and Morgan Duggan. Here they are, the 15 men of the West, fit and anxious to battle for hurling's greatest honour. And the boys of Wexford, Nick O'Donnell, Pudge Kyo and the others, all keen to compensate for recent years near misses. Most Reverend Dr. Canaan, Archbishop of Cashel, is escorted to the field by GA President Mr. Seamus McFerrin and Secretary Paddy O'Keefe. The introductions and soon the game is on. Almost from the start, Wexford attack. The pace is fast, the hurling keen. Nicky Racker gets a ground pass, pulls hard, and the ball shakes the net. Less than a minute later, Tim Flood sends over a Wexford point. Round about now, the people who viewed the final as a cakewalk for the Leinster men were having a wonderful time, but their joy was short-lived. Billy Duffy from a free has a Galway point, which instills new life into the Westerners. Here they come again, and Jimmy Burke and Paddy Egan combined to score a Galway goal. And now it's Paddy Egan adding another to put the Galway men in 2-1 to 1-2. At this stage, Galway are in rampant mood and the play is brisk. Wexford are not ruffled as Nicky Rackard plays on after a foul. He takes the free himself and makes no mistake with a point. The Antlihera was the kid lad that has bugged the Athra. We went in the Galleveg and went to the Hunter Garfad to see the Kung Tosig Gudion Sos. Excitement runs high and the hurling is fast and brisk. There's no doubting the merit of the Galway men. It's only sterling work by the Wexford backs that keeps the score down. And the opportunism of the forwards too as Ned Wheeler sends in a goal after a save by goalkeeper Tom Boland.
Billy Racker just chased here. He swings the first time. He misses. He swings the second and he gets it. Now it's Bobby Rackard clearing from Tim Sweeney. Johnny Malloy sends in a 70 and it's over the bar for a point for Galway. Galway 2-4, Wexford 2-3. And in the closing moments of the first half, Morgan Duggan increases it to 2-5 to 2-3. From the restart, Wexford settled down, but so too do Galway and the Wexford backs of several anxious moments before the tide turns so definitely in their favor. In the opening stages of this half, the tempo has the same pulsating beat as in the first period. Galway's Joe Salmon is doing well about now, as is Jimmy Duggan. And Salmon almost has full reward for an effort at goal. some of the highlights of a second half in which Wexford wore down their rivals. Seamus Hearn, who had such a successful wandering game, begins with revival in earnest with this point from far out. the center of the field exchanges alternate but gradually Wexford gained the control. Ned Wheeler is beaten for a moment by Galway's Jim Fives but Podge Kill is there to send over the equalizer for Wexford. Paddy Kyo pretends to go right, goes left, sends to Nicky Rackard whose point brings the lead to Wexford. the excitement of it all. A 21-yard free and another Nicky Rackard point. The Wexford men are on the victory march, but they show there's life in Galway. Morgan Duggan does likewise for them. Art Foley saves in the Wexford goal and full forward Burke has a shot that misses the mark. Now it's Wexford on top, hurling with a dash of champions. Gradually their total mounts, and with it, their daring. Nick Morrissey solos up the wing. Billy Rackard's free, but this time the sharpshooter Tim Flood is wide of the mark. It's all done by mirrors by these would-be onlookers. Joe Salmon loses his stick, but boots the ball, and to take it is Wexford's Jim Morrissey. The jump for joy and the final whistle sounds with Wexford champions. Three goals and 13 points to Galway's two goals and eight. And here come the surging masses of Wexford followers, wild with justifiable excitement, running from all ends of the field to chair and cheer their heroes. And on the Hogan stand, the president of the Gaelic Athletic Association, Mr. Seamus McFerrin, presents the McCarthy Cup to Wexford's captain, Nick O'Donnell, who indeed has played a captain's part in this great day for Wexford hurling. <laughs>